Zach, welcome to the show. Thank you. How Thanks. are you? Very good. Thanks for having me. Welcome, welcome. So, your trip to London today was from Manchester. Yes, yeah, we do it quite a lot. Um, only takes a couple of hours on the train, so That's I think cool. it almost took longer getting from Victoria to here than it did from oh, did Manchester it? to London, but uh, no, it's awesome. Thanks good, for, good. Thanks you didn't get much traffic on the way from Central to here? Yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was school run. Yeah, you Sorry. left at exactly the wrong time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, wrong time. Cool. Now, Zach, we actually didn't even know each other or had spoken to each other up until a week ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was fascinated by a post on LinkedIn that I came across that you wrote. Yes. So that was my first interaction with you. Yep. Now, if you don't mind, oh. I'm going to bring that post up. <laughs> I, I found it really intriguing because um, it was unique. Um, it certainly stood out. And it was a post about how you treat your employees yes. at Grad Touch. Yeah. Um, now we, I can either read it or you can read it. it might be nice if you read it. <laughs> I can I can read what it in my think? in my dulcet tones yeah? if you want to. So I've got it up there. Right. Okay. If you could just read that through to us and then we can discuss. Absolutely. Friday is the only day I see all of my employees. Why? Because I pay for their lunch. Two years ago, we introduced a fully flexible working approach. We got rid of contracted hours and replaced them with KPIs. Uh, we introduced unlimited holidays because when people want time off, let them have time off. Uh, we told people they could work wherever they want, whenever they want. We started to build a culture based on performance and trust. Now people work the hours they need to get the job done. Uh, if they work stupid hours one week, then they'll take time off the next. It's all about finding that balance. Uh, because our team works different hours, we all get together for lunch every Friday. This gives us time once a week to get together and discuss everything and anything. Too many people in business get caught up on the small stuff. Empower your staff, trust your team, focus on results, simples. And yeah, that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> so that was a post. That's it. I've never right. read it out loud, actually. That's the first that time I've weird? read it out loud. That was that really weird. Strange. That was like my, my stream of consciousness, just kind of like going out, <laughs> saying it out loud. Thanks for reading that. And as I said, that's the thing that really stood out. Now, amazingly, you've got just over 51,000 likes, which yes. is incredible. And I browsed through some of the comments and all of them were very positive. Yeah. Uh, they love the concept. Yeah. What was the idea behind it? Especially things like we introduce unlimited holidays. How does yeah. something like that work in, in a workplace? So we're still quite a relatively young business. Um, right. I mean, we've been, we've been going for about five years, but um, the, the business as it is now has only really been around for about three years. Right. And it was my first job when I set up Grad Touch. Uh-huh. And I thought, hey, what's it like to be a professional? <laughs> Everyone has to work 8.45 till 6. Yeah. Um, everyone has to take a minimum amount of holidays a year. Like, you've got to be around. It's, I, I just had the wrong uh, idea of what it was like to work. Sure. So when we introduced it, you know, it came about because someone asked me, um, I said, Zach, why are you tracking the amount of holidays we're having when you don't track how much overtime we're doing yeah. because when you're in that kind of startup uh well when you were just when we were just starting up we were we were doing crazy hours because we needed to to get mm. any sort of traction sure so uh yeah and and it was just like i, I don't know i don't <laughs> i don't know why we're why we're not why we're, why we're tracking holidays mm. and i don't know why we're trying to make people work set hours when they you know they might work best from 12 in the afternoon till Sure. Till ten o'clock at night, and certainly from from introducing this, you you are very keen on yes, your employees giving you um, kind of all they have in terms yeah. of their skills and abilities. Yeah. Um, but in return, you give them a very flexible working schedule as yeah, long as absolutely. they get the job done. Yes, it's is all that, about it's all idea? about the outcomes. Sure. So it doesn't matter uh, how people get there, mm -hmm. um, as long as they get there. And yeah. all the all the results and the outcomes and the KPIs that they're, they're all defined daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly right. between employee and manager, um, and that means that we all know what we're working towards all the time. Sure. And I think because it's very fluid, um, you know, it's not like we'll define it one day and then we won't look at it for three months. It'll be this is what we're trying to do. It's not working. Let's change it around. Yeah. Um, and I think because the business is always evolving, it just meant it was such a great way of looking at things mm. because when you are starting up. You, you you're always chasing something Absolutely. always 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 yeah, chasing yeah. something and it never feels like you're you know i never feel satisfied with where we are you know i look back and go wow we've come a long way but mm -hmm. 
but I'm never satisfied. And I think by bringing in definable, like this is going to get done, yeah. And if this gets done, we'll be happy. Right. Then you can then you can have something you can work towards, which is firstly mm-hmm. achievable, but secondly you can you can acknowledge that you've achieved it, and mm-hmm. then you can go before moving on to the next thing. Um, What's been the response from the employees? Were they surprised when you introduced this working model? Yeah, I mean, we, we gradually brought it in. So we, we started off with the f- with flexible hours and flexible location and unlimited holidays. And um, it kind of took about six months to bring the whole, sure. whole system in. Um, okay. But it, it didn't work out with everyone, I think. Um, so I guess everyone has... A slightly different way of working and what they're used to as well. Yeah, well, that's I mean, it, it's supposed to work around how people want, but the thing is, when you bring in a system and it's and it's kind of we trust you. Yeah. Here's here's all this autonomy. We want to empower you. Go and get the results. You can't hide. There's nowhere to hide in that system. Yeah, absolutely. So I think um, you know we, we've lost a lot. Of, I'd say not a lot of people. We've probably lost. I mean, we're a team of twenty two now, and we're bit smaller than that when we brought it in and sure. I think there's probably 60 65 percent of the staff when we brought it in are still here so mm. it's a case of naturally people moving on I'd say a certain percentage of people moved on quite quickly sure um but it was tough I think I think when people look at it from the outside and this referring back to the comments that I've had on on LinkedIn everyone's like oh wow sounds amazing oh mm-hmm. man you're the best boss ever and it's like it's great to hear that I mean, obviously <laughs> it does a load for my ego but um, they, don't, they don't know the, they don't know the reality of it. it. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, and, and there's one of the best comments on there um, that I've been engaging quite a lot with. Yeah. Um, the guy was saying, you know, this isn't actually the reality. Like, it sounds all great, but but people are putting in a lot of work to mm. make this system work. Yeah. Um, and that's true. And, you, you know, I can't fit that into 100, whatever it is, 1,300 characters on a LinkedIn post. But sure. it's great, and it looks fantastic on the outside. It's painful to put in place mm-hmm. um, and to make it work. You know, we've always said the business we're trying to build, we want a high performance kind of culture yeah. where everyone gets on, but it's all about the results. Absolutely. Um, and I think that by, we, we've been able to actually do that now and I'm, I'm very happy with what we've got, but um, we only have such good perks because of the hard work which goes in. Mm. So it's like you can have as many holidays as you, as you want off. Yeah. If you've got the job done, don't care. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I think it works more with certain teams as well. Mm-hmm. So the tech team are very project based, and you can see that uh, really as kind of like the most obvious place to implement it. So we did a a big tech build before Christmas, and it was probably for three or four months. So it was quite a big thing. The guys were slogging away. There's all seven right. of them were working on it, um, and probably two weeks beforehand, the guys they pulled like hundred hour weeks. Wow. And it's because they had already said to everyone else in the business, we'll deliver it on this deadline. Mm-hmm. And when we say, when people commit to doing something, we make sure that they do it. But not not me making sure, but they want to do it because they've yeah, said, yeah, yeah. we give them as much time as they want. If they go, it's five months. Mm. It takes five months. Like sure. it is what it is. Yeah. But something had happened and they were falling a bit behind. And they were exhausted by the time it went up. But then... Um, I know that one of the guys, it was Christmas, so we we're, were naturally going on a holiday, naturally like a week and a half off yeah. anyway. Um, but it got finished at the beginning of December, and I know someone went off from the 7th of December till the 9th, 10th of January. Okay. And that's just like, mm-hmm. because there's nothing else yet. Yeah. Pardon me, there's nothing else to do. It's just that's kind of how it's worked. Sure. Oh, I want to kind of bring it back um, to yourself and your own experience. Yeah. Um if I'm not mistaken, you studied uh, theology at yes. Durham University. Durham, yep. Um, why theology? What what? Uh, I enjoyed subject? religious studies um, at A level, and back when I was seventeen, eighteen, and I was having to make these tough life decisions, I right. thought I was a bit of a. I don't know. I just probably thought I was, I was smarter than I actually was, and I'd like to go <laughs> away and think about the meaning of life and all that kind of stuff. Right. Um, but yeah, did it, you expect it was... the course to to be what you thought it was going to be like, or um, any surprises? I was surprised. What actually surprised me was the level of don't want to say fundamentalism because that's not the right word, but the mm. the extremes between beliefs. Sure. So on one hand, you would have I'd say like forty percent of people were atheists. Okay. Ten twenty percent kind of believed. 
Because these were the students studying. The students, yeah. Okay, and okay. then you've and then you've got you had another kind of like 30, 40 percent of people who were like really, really strong with their religious beliefs. So it was it, there wasn't really much of a middle ground. Okay. So it it was it was like it was a really interesting environment to to study in because <laughs> you just got these extremes yeah. of I I believe this scripture because a lot of it was based around scripture and the uh, like the 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 historical accuracy of like things that had happened and right. rather than questioning religion you spent a lot of the time questioning um, scripture and stories mm. and how it came to be and all that kind of stuff um, and looking at translations so looking okay. at how in English there's there's in England alone sorry there's 26 different variations of Bibles all with different translations sure. and it was like this is how words uh -huh. change and but it was just like having these two extremes of people talking about it and not really many people in the middle. Mm. So the debates were like, Quite I think intense. really yeah, intense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because it wasn't just like, you know, it's not like geography where you're going, uh, you know, I don't believe in this. I don't believe in that. And it's like, okay, let's all go down to the pub. This was like people's entire world beliefs mm. and it was extremely personal. And I think because it was so personal, it, it was just, um, it was a really intense course, I like really imagine. intense. I can imagine. Um, yeah. Really good fun, mm. but um, so I imagine then after the course, let's fast forward, say two three years, the course has finished. Yep, you've gone through quite an intense experience mm -hmm. studying theology, um, and then after university, yeah, um, you applied for a number of graduate schemes, but that whole process perhaps didn't go as planned for you. No, so explain I, that to us. What happened? I think when you're at university. There's a handful of companies which which come onto campus, yeah. And life up until that point has been do these GCSEs, do these A levels, do this course mm. at university, and then it's like, and then what? What happens then? What happens yeah. next? Yeah. Um, and you kind of left not left by yourself, but you kind of the only thing I thought I could do coming out of Durham was be an accountant, be a lawyer, be a banker, and like. Or, or be a consultant, yeah, because that sounds cool, right? It does. <laughs> so I went for consulting because that sounded like the sexiest idea, right? Um, and then you you applied to um, Accenture. I did. Yeah. Did Normally you? I say big strategy consultancy yeah. company, but yeah, I applied to Accenture, and uh, and they, they actually accepted you, but there was something to do with the grading. Yes, I needed yeah. a two one. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was conditional on the two one, right? And I was like. Easy peasy, I'm going to get that. But my problem was I was, because I was so engrossed in my course, yeah. I decided to do my dissertation on the meaning of life, okay. which was a bad decision. Right. And uh, the dissertation got 40%, so I just got a pass on it. And, mm. that, dragged, and that counted for like half the year. And it okay. dragged me down to a 2-2 two -two on like 59.8. Yeah. And I remember going to see my tutor and being like, give me the 0.2%, like yeah, round yeah. it up. He's like... So it's going to be one of them life lessons, and I was like, "Dude, I've got like a, so close. I've got like, a, I've got like a really well-paid job down in London, yeah, and yeah. I've already spent the golden hello, like the uh -huh. golden handshake. Like, yeah. I need this. I've got a house lined up and everything." He's like, "Oh, sorry, sorry." Well, I guess so. Everything happens for a reason, right? Yeah. And I guess if you did manage to go to Essential at that time, perhaps you wouldn't be where you are now. With yeah. Grad touch. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, but saying that. Do you have any regrets no. around, around how you did your dissertation or no. anything like that? Or you just accept? I think it at the once? I think at the time I did. Um, I think <laughs> I think I had a lot of regrets. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, all all of the failures, or however you want to perceive them personally, like they've all led to the where I am now. Absolutely. So opportunities for growth, right? Yeah. yeah absolutely. Mm. So. I think it's more of a what do you do with it. Obviously, at the time, like it felt like the worst thing ever. Um, sure. Moving back home. Yeah. The, the 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 worst bit was I had to go and get my old job back at Next, which paid like f wasn't even five pounds an hour back. I used then. to work at Next. Right? Really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, menswear. <laughs> so like, if you wanted a suit, come and talk to me. Um, <laughs> and I, I just remember I had, to, I had to go back, and I was they they did a massive send off for me. Right. Um, and they were like, oh, Zach's got this awesome job in London, isn't he? A big dog, blah, 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 blah. Um, and I went <laughs> to like go crawling back. Not crawl. I was like, 
yeah, it didn't work out. And they were like, oh, what happened to your job? And blah, blah, blah. Because I kind of told everyone what the wage was as well, because you can see it online. And, right. and like, it's a really good starting salary. Yeah. Uh, one of the best ones out there. And they were like, oh, yeah, you're going to get paid more than the store manager. And, blah, blah, blah. and then I went back and, and, and they're like, do you want your job back as a sales assistant? I was like, yeah, please. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, like, I'd already spent, the, the signing on bonus was like five grand. Hmm, which okay. you got which you got paid in your first paycheck. Yeah. And I was like, well I'm obviously getting my first paycheck in August. Yeah. So I um just spent the money. I just but basically that meant spending an, all of my overdraft and, and the credit card. Thinking that you're gonna thinking get that job, I'm gonna yeah. get it paid back. Um so that was tough, especially when you're earning five pounds an hour and you're doing hmm. you know, thirty hours a week. It takes a long time to pay yeah, back. Absolutely, yeah. Pay that back, but um it's really good. Yeah, it was, like it was an experience, I guess, in life. And, and um, <laughs> as I said earlier, you wouldn't be where you are now. Um, so let's go back to Brad Touch. Yep. Um, would you say the idea of Brad Touch was perhaps inspired by your own experience of looking yep. for a job after university? Absolutely. So I I kind of, it, it took a long time though. It took it took me a good six months to get out of my like self-pitying, like I was, I was just anxious all the time and I'm not, I wouldn't say depressed. I think that's... Um, what would you say was, you were anxious about? Just like life and what was next. And I had this plan. And that was the thing is I had this plan. Yeah. And I was moving in with my mates and I was going to do this. And that, and then that had just all gone out the window. And I think I'd scrape by in life at every other point. And I okay. thought I'd scrape by at this as well. And then this is like whammy. Like uh, you start off in the world of work at like zero yeah, and no yeah. one cares about you. And I thought... Oh, so everything's going to be okay. It's, it's not. No one cares. I and mean, it's interesting you say that because I was very similar as well um, in, in my time in education. I only really enjoyed education at university when I studied media. Yeah. But before then, I never really enjoyed the core subjects. Yeah. It was always kind of doing enough just to get by. Yeah. Until you realize you can't carry on doing that because you're not doing a subject that you love. Yeah. So would you say Grad Touch was the first time that you actually immersed yourself completely in in something yeah i mean it for me it was like a kind of a big middle finger up to the world to say you know what if i can't right. if i don't have a job with you guys i'm going to figure out a way of doing it so it, it was originally a way of me getting a job with someone else so okay. my first well one of my first clients were deloitte and um I was like, great, I'm going to speak to the head of HR there. Um, you know, she said to me, if you ever want a job here, that, that, you know, that'll work out because you've, you've helped us. You know, what the original concept was events on campus so employers could come and meet the students yeah. um, that were right for them. Uh, and it w worked really well. But I think you know, I, I got to meet the hiring managers and that was why I was doing it was because, yeah, I could maybe make a bit of money, but... Yeah. You know, I'm meeting the head of graduate recruitment at Deloitte and at Teach First and at and at the co-op. And I was These like, are the kind of the big boys. Yeah, so I was like, so if I'm going to get a job, what well, I know, I don't want to fill in this application form because I've got a two two, so they won't want me anyway. So yeah, I'll just yeah. go straight to them and offer them something. Mm. Um, what would you say was because you wanted to do something that kind of fixed the problem for students? What was yeah. broken at the time? What did you feel wasn't working for graduates? I think the lack of awareness of how much opportunity there is out there okay and i think the way in which that was then presented to people so um you know the the, the times top 100 are <laughs> it's an ever-changing group of employers that come onto campus but it's all like the big household names that you would have yeah. known already okay and they they only hire seven percent of graduates every year and the other 93 percent go and work for companies that you've never heard of mm. and <clears throat> when I saw that statistic, I was like, well, where, the, where the hell are these jobs? Um, and that, that's when I just drove it as well. I was like, but also that the, the recruitment process is just like, there's nothing human about it. You're filling in these massive forms. Yeah. You're coming along to these assessment centers and stuff. And I just, I just wanted to, I thought I could change that. That's what I thought I could do. I thought if you could find the right grads, and you could find the right employers, it'd be so easy to, to match make them together. And like, that's how we've tried to build our platform, sure. is if we show students and graduates all of the awesome companies out there, and we put it and we, and we build it in a way that they'll want to digest the information with the videos on there and the behind the scenes interviews and all that kind of stuff, 
and people watch that. No, no one wants to come onto a website and read a two hundred word job description yeah. about a company full of buzzwords like that. No Absolutely. one knows what they mean. Yeah. So that that was the that was the approach. That very was the much. approach. And there's certainly a lot of frustrations out there for graduates, yeah. as you all know. Um, yeah. I'm sure people come to you frustrated and they want a fix, and you give that to them. Yeah. What's the number one um, annoyance from students you work with? What do they not like about the recruitment system at the moment? People who do it yeah, differently from you. I think there's, so we, we try and not get involved in the process. We, we just try and advertise the opportunities and let the employers deal with it and, sure. and we try and influence what happens in the recruitment process but I think you've kind of got two angles when you come out of university you can be you can feel which is what I did which is I am entitled to a role yeah because you feel like it's the next step is it wrong to be, think that you're entitled yeah you absolutely say? yeah yeah it doesn't matter who you are how good a grade you got you know it doesn't matter if you're the captain of the football team or you were the social sec on the chess squad or whatever. I don't know why I chose chess squad. It's the only society <laughs> I could think of. Squad? No, but I, I, I obviously <laughs> looked up to them it. enough. Yeah. Um, but like, that's like, no one cares. Like, right. and I think that's, it's really hard for people to swallow. Like it doesn't matter what you've done up until this point. None of that really transcends into the commercial world. So it's really interesting you say that because it, it, it certainly says that maybe things are changing because certainly yeah. when I was at university, there was huge emphasis on doing extracurricular activities yeah. related to your field to support what you're studying. Yeah. Would you say that's no longer the case now? I think if you can, you know, if you want to be a banker, do an internship in a bank over the summer before you graduate. Right. If you want to get into media, it's like doing an internship. But like, that's what people care about. And especially in the creative um, fields, it, or if you're tech, it's like you should have a portfolio of all the things you've done. Um, you know, we've interviewed grads straight out of uni, like, okay, I want to be a junior developer. Cool, what have you built? Mm, not, not that much. Right, okay. It's like, why not? Like, just, like, if it's what you love and it's what you want to do all the time, then get paid to do it, then you should have a level of something to show. And I think that's what it is. It's, I think when you, you, you come out of university and you think, I've done this, yeah, captain of the football team, therefore it's going gonna, it's gonna to it's gonna transcend into And it's just like, no, that's nice. People kind of like that. But no one's like... There's a reason it's at the bottom of your CV. Sure. It's because no one really, no one really cares Pay about attention it. To it. It's, it's a bit of extra information about the kind of character you are, and it might help figure out like what role you want to be doing or whatever. But like, have you done an internship? Biggest tick. Have you made something yourself? And that's mm. the, like, there's so much opportunity to just make stuff. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if like, ten people have watched it or a mm. thousand people have watched it. You've made something. You've got Absolutely. something to show people. And yeah. I think. That's the bit that's missing. Mm. I think that's the bit that university doesn't tell you as well is um, that's what people, like if I could go back yeah. and think one thing I would do when I'm sat around with six hours a week of lectures going, I've got no time, mm -hmm. is done something more kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. commercially savvy, I sure. think. Um, and I'm sure students will face the same problem <coughs> that you faced after university. So they yeah. start applying for graduate schemes and yeah. jobs and they don't get a response saying, three, six, maybe even 12 months. Yeah. So in that time that they're not doing anything, would you advise either they carry on applying or like no. you say, do something that's keeping them busy with yeah, so the field? I had this same chat with someone on Monday Yeah. and they said, um, you know, I'm applying for 20, 30 jobs a day. And I was like, why? Why are you applying for 20, 30 jobs a day? And like, I can say that now with hindsight and because of the position I'm in, but like at that time, I thought that would have been the right thing to do. Yeah. But when you stop and think about it and go, I don't want to work at these 20 or 30 companies. I'm just applying because I, sure. I want a job. And like, obviously there's different factors that play into it. You know, people's financial situations, anything that's going on in their personal life yeah. leads to why they do that. But if, you, if you're in the position where like, why do you need a job tomorrow? Mm. Stop and have a think about what you want to do. Go out there and experience things. Yeah. Do something and make something yourself. And I think it's just, yeah, it's, it's like, you, sh you shouldn't apply that that approach of just throwing enough of the proverbial and something sticking is just the worst approach because you're sending a cv and a cover letter and it's the same to every company but every company you're applying to you're applying to a different role sure. and your cover letter says to whom it may concern mm -hmm. don't, don't write that on it go and go and linkedin stalk someone like you'll find it like that and so perhaps people need to start thinking outside of the box i don't a bit more. i don't think it's outside the box i think it's 
again, when I was having this conversation on Monday, it was, you're not applying to some like robot. You're applying to like Terry in HR or Jennifer, the line manager who's hiring. Like you're, you're applying to a person and unless you speak to them like a person, they won't be affected. They won't be affected. And it, again, that's, that's why when I started Grad Search, it was like, we need to work these hours. Sure. And we need to dress like this because that's mm. that's what a professional is. And I think when no one tells you that at uni, because you think I'm going to send off a, I'm going to send off a, a covering letter. It's and probably, that, it's that probably going, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. probably going to someone two or three years older than you who's in one of their first jobs. Sure. And it's like, well, would you speak to your mate like that? Yeah. And obviously, you need to have information Absolutely. in it, but like, it's a person-to-person -person interaction. So it seems what you're saying is we need students need a bit more strategy when it comes to applying for yeah, jobs. Um, absolutely. It's not just a blanket cover letter term. Yeah. Cool. So that brings us nicely to the end of part one. Um, in part two, I'd love to discuss with you and get your tips on um, what else students can do to land that perfect job. Cool. Cool. Awesome. We can have a drink and uh, yeah. come back shortly. Relax. Awesome. Good. Thank you. Welcome back to part two. Thank you. Um, I want to touch upon um, your kind of strategy when you work with your clients. Yeah. Um, Certainly in the earlier days, you were attracting the slightly bigger clients. Yes. But recently, you've shifted your attention to the smaller clients yep. and building a relationship with them. Yep. Why is that important for you? Um, I think it's because we, and this isn't this isn't in a in a kind of cocky sense, but sure. we we kind of know what will work for them. Yeah. And when you're working with larger brands, and it's and it's great, but there's so much more control around. Um, their employer brand, the media, the marketing, and everything that goes with it. So when we work with smaller companies, and they're not, you know, they're smaller compl compared to the likes of Next and Audi, but they're still, you know, tens, hundreds of millions kind yeah. of turnover companies. But, <clears throat> pardon me, um, you know, you, you can go in there and you can say to them, guys, you're, you're after the best talent. Um, you've got a great culture. And what we're going to do is use that culture to attract the best talent to your business. Because sure. I think when, when grads are coming out of university now, then they're, they're not just looking for a salary band. They're not just looking for the location. It's kind of, is this a company which fits with my ethics, my morals? Can I see myself working there? Do I, do I fit, fit in culturally to it? Are the people like me who work there, who went to similar unis and did similar courses, like, can I see myself getting on with the people? Yeah. And that's more and more important than ever. Um, and that's why I love working with companies that are just so much more um, open to, mm. to having that conversation. And, and what we say is, you know, you might be, a, as an employer, sorry, as a, as a company, you might be amazing at, you know, selling shoes in yeah. your shoe shop. But you are terrible at selling mm. what it's like to work there. Sure. And it's a completely different conversation as well. Um, and it's one that's supposed to be, you know, you're selling your shoes and you're saying, best shoes ever, like, you know. All I can think of is Michael Jordan. Like Michael Jordan uses them, uh, or whatever, or like, or like this celebrity endorses them, and yeah. it's just all this big hype. But you can't do that with your employer brand. Your employer brand mm. is like an honest conversation with you and your employees, you and potential employees, and you're saying this is like what it's like to work here. Mm -hmm. If you like it, come in. If you don't, it's fine. Like, and that's the uh, that's that's what why I love working with those types of companies because they're willing to go that extra distance and kind of put themselves out there. Mm. Uh, and say what it's actually like to work there. You know, they're not they're not they're not hiding it behind um, kind of buzzwords and sure. kind of pre vetted phrases that they're yeah, allowed yeah, to say. Yeah. It's kind of this is who we are. You know, on Wednesdays we play five aside. You know, on Thursdays Amazing. we all go down to the pub, and it's just it's just like it's the it's the real life. Mm. It's like yes, it is quite hard work, um, but you like to create that balance. <clears throat> absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, when when you get an employer that that can be open about who they are, mm -hmm. they they're gonna attract the talent which is right for them. Sure. So if you are a heavy sales environment, yeah, um, you know, with a bell in the in the room and you ring every time someone makes a deal, it's like say that. Yeah. You know, you don't need to attract everyone, but you want to attract the guys who want to work there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, on the flip side, if you're, I'm not trying to stereotype, but if you're like if you're a marketing <laughs> agency and you're a lot more flexible in how you work. Right. Then and you've got bean bags and a ping pong table and it's all like really chilled out. Mm -hmm. Like say that. Mm -hmm. And again, you don't need to attract. You know, you're not trying to attract um, the top, top, top grads who will go off and work in a bank or an accountancy firm because right. they just want 
you know, 40 grand a year starting salary. Like you're trying to find people who like you and so, like you don't have to attract everyone. So that's, that's why I like working with them because we can, you can just say to them, um, who's your target audience? Brilliant. Yeah. That's, that's who we'll go after. Mm. Uh, and who cares about what the rest of the world thinks about you? Sure. As long as you're engaging with your core audience. Mm. Um, now, we were talking briefly before we started about performance and employee performance, and it's yeah. a subject that I'm absolutely fascinated by, and I'm intrigued to know what makes someone perform amazingly well and what yeah. makes a person um, perform not so well. Yeah. From your experience, I mean, you've worked with so many employees um, yes. at Grad Touch. Have you seen any patterns of what makes somebody do really well and what makes somebody perform poorly? Yes. So what would those things be? <clears throat> um, I think it's all been learned from experience, and that's sure. like me personally, yeah, like messing up a lot, right? And I think what what we found now, uh, and I, and we could be quite honest about that because there's are there's definitely situations where it's like that's absolutely my fault. Like we've created this situation. Um, I think it's when you don't trust people. Is when you have a real problem, and and that's like I said at the beginning. That's the culture we try to move away from. Yeah. When people feel empowered, okay, uh, and not just in in the sense of do they have everything they need to do to do their job, but do they feel like they're progressing? Do they feel like the business is going somewhere? Do they feel like they can come and talk to you and have a an open and honest conversation mm. about you know their wage and it's not even you know um, review time, but they want to talk to you about it. And it's like if you if you can have if you can build up an environment where an employee can turn around to you and say, you're wrong, and I'm going to tell you why you're wrong, and I don't rip their head off for kind of offending me about it. Like That's that's how we've tried to build it, and I think that's how we've tried to get the best performance out of people. Obviously, okay. it works differently everywhere, mm. but like even one thing we've tried to change over the last three months is, like I was saying then, like, it's okay to... You know, don't attack people, but you can attack their ideas. You can attack the way in which they're doing something. And, 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 and by attack, I mean, you know, critiquing it, saying, this is wrong, or I don't like yeah. it, and this is why. And getting people to feel comfortable that when someone says that, like, that's a, that's a rubbish idea. Mm. And it's rubbish because of this, and it's not going to work. That, that if it's your idea, you're not going to get a shrink off and sure, hide. Sure. It's like, it's just an idea. Mm. Or it's just a way of doing it. Or... You know, we're always asking ourselves, like, why are we doing something the way we're doing it? Yeah. And often the answer is, well, so and so used to do it like that, and they've passed it on to me, and it's like, well, mm. and as soon as someone realizes that, they go, yeah, yeah, I need to change it. Mm. So I think you can you can get performance out of people, and you can create that that environment if you just. I mean, it's hard work. It's really hard work, and I'm not. I don't even think we're 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 all the way down the road yet with it. There's still so much more we we need to experiment with. Um, okay, but it's so, but it's cool. It's really cool yeah. trying it out. So you're saying it's really important for people to kind of go through that trial and error process. Yeah, they have to learn from you can't their not. mistakes. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like you could life, you yeah. could listen in, listen to me saying this is how we did it or whatever. But um, every business is different, mm. and what we did won't necessarily work on the mm. business next door. And do you feel in in a lot of companies? I'm sure not with with Grad Touch, but with a lot of companies, they don't have the patience to put up with that learning process yeah. that employees need to go through. Right? Yeah. If someone's not doing well, um, it's quite easy for them to let go and find someone else. Yeah. What's been your your take on, on this? How do you handle situations where, say, an employee isn't performing as they should do? Yeah. How do you negotiate um, that? Painfully. Like, there's no way outs around it, but the, the, the reality is is that you just need to sit down and talk. Mm. Like, I honestly feel like, 99% of the world problems can just be solved by sitting down with someone and having a yeah. conversation. And it's that kind of, um, we've, I've had multiple of, mul uh, multiples of them. Um, multiple of them? I've had a lot of them. <laughs> I've had a lot of them recently. Um, where I've just sat down and going, what's going on? Mm. Like, you, this, is, this isn't you. Why are you doing this? Yeah. And turn around and they've gone, yeah, I appreciate, you know, I'm acting wrong here and my performance has dropped, but I don't understand the strategy or I don't get where I'm going. And your sure. communications act hasn't been very good about this mm. that we're doing. So do you appreciate that? When, Absolutely. When yeah. Because yeah. like it, when you're running a business at the end of the day, anything bad in it is your fault. Like you've got to take, you've got to like own everything. Everything. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, like, and it's really bad because you, you have to own all the bad stuff, but you can't own all the good stuff. <laughs> so it's like you're in like it's like lose lose, but yeah. it's like you kind of you have to own every bad situation, um, and that's something that I've learned even over the last year. I think how to try and do that better. Like again, nowhere near perfect, but sure. but if when someone turns around to me and goes, I don't like. I don't like why you're doing this, or you're not communicating it properly, or you know, it's like cool because if if they're thinking it, other people other are. People could be thinking it. Yeah, well. yeah, and it's and that's how you get like that us and them mentality, mm-hmm. um, and that, you know that that's really hard to break that down and, and to be able to just if someone's having a problem instead of people going off and it festering for a couple of weeks and everyone talking about it when they're you know having a beer or people downstairs smoking you'd or whatever, deal with it just deal away. with it. So, so yeah, I think and we've got much better at that where people can come and just go, I don't like this. Mm. And I guess also if, if an employee is not, say, satisfied with their position, there's also nothing wrong with perhaps finding something else because there comes a point yeah. in everyone's career where yeah, they don't they're want to be not doing being fulfilled anymore. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So would you encourage employees, if they're not happy, to not feel bad about looking for another job? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's absolutely it's fine. Whether, world, whether it's internally or externally, it's just like, I, I want every employee that works here at yeah. GradTouch to feel like they're being challenged every day. Sure. And if they're not, and if they don't feel like they're progressing, then and if we can't give challenge it, them, yeah. we can't give it to them, I'm just, no hard feelings. It's no like, feelings, I'm always yeah. going to, someone says, oh, I'm, not, I'm not enjoying this. Then we're always going to try and find something else for them to do. Mm. Um, because that's how you get value out of people, because they're doing something they want to do. Um, and I, I, Yeah, and it's, it's not easy. Um, we've done a lot of conversations recently with people kind of slightly changing roles and adapting and they're always ongoing those conversations it's never like that's done let's move on um, so do you mean someone's doing a particular job and role and then they want to incorporate different things yeah something completely different? yeah yeah okay do they find that difficult switching to another role I think it, it's never it it's never a massive jump it's always okay. kind of a I've discovered something in what I was doing that I really want to focus on and yeah. it's kind of that's how it's it's so naturally it's not evolved. A drastic change. Yeah. Okay. It's not like I'm in sales and I want to do tech or anything sure. like that. But you know, I, I interviewed two people this morning and this afternoon. I don't even think what time it is now. Um, You're on a busy schedule. It's a busy schedule. <laughs> I've never been that busy. Um, we've interviewed two people this morning, and and neither of them applied for a job. So they both got in how touch. How did you find them? Um, oh, they both they got, got in touch in with touch. me. Okay. They got in touch with me, and they said, "Isaac, this is what I do." And I think I can advise you to your business by this, this, and this. And when someone gets in touch with you like that and says, it shows that yeah, it's like absolutely yeah, got to meet yeah, them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we spent spent early this afternoon meeting. That I wouldn't even call it an interview; it's just a conversation. Conversation. Um, and our last two or three hires have all come from that way as well. Interesting. And it's just it's just come from conversation because mm. you know you've got a need, but when someone comes to you and goes, "Here's my value. This is how I can help." then it's like, oh, it's so much easier than we need someone to fill this role. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can't do that all the time. And that's that's a lot. That's kind of the outliers. But the more you can do that, the better. Definitely. Sure. So we're coming to the end um, of this fantastic conversation, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but before we do end, um, I'd love to ask you your kind of final tips to students who yes. are looking for that next step. Yeah. Um, they've just left university. They're a bit confused. They don't know what to do next. Um, should they contact somebody like you or should they take time out to think properly before they get in touch? Yeah. What would you say is the best I think, step? I think sign up to different jobs boards. Mm-hmm. See what else. Obviously sign up to our jobs board. Um, gradtouch.com forward slash register. Um, I think yeah. you should. <laughs> very nice to just plug that in. I think you should get out there because like there's so much opportunity. I think... The other thing is, is like work out what you're passionate about. Try and see, you know, if you can get an internship or a bit, you know, a few days experience and just try something. I think too many people haven't tried something and they go, I need to be this or I need to do this. Yeah. Because because in every friendship group, there's one guy who's got a job like two years before he graduates. And it's like, oh, come on, dude. <laughs> um, and it's like, oh, he might be a banker or an accountant or a lawyer. And it's like, oh, that's what I need to be because that's what they're doing. Like, yeah, yeah. There's so much opportunity out there. And there's so many new jobs which weren't even there 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I just think find something, you know, if you if you think there's something you're passionate about, explore it more. It could just be something you do as a hobby. If you're not sure what you're passionate about, you need to just try as many things. I think there's no need to rush into 
taking any job. On the flip side, you know, if some if an opportunity does come, just 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 take it. Just just take that job. Um, Rather than not doing anything for six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take it because you'll learn. Because you'll learn, and it might be it might be in a call center. It might be doing some admin work. But like, you'll meet other people. You'll get exposure to a commercial environment. You're not going to be a CEO from day one. So just you've got to grind, you've got to work, and you've got to also find out what motivates you. And you don't do that by sitting in your bedroom kind of thinking, oh, I could maybe do this or that. Absolutely, yeah. So regardless of what the role is, it's much better than just sitting at home for six months, four yeah, months. absolutely. Just do something, just do get something. busy. Do something. Um, final thing. Yep. As you know, I love the whole thing about performance, employee performance. Yeah. What makes a top performer at work, in your opinion? Um, someone who is empowered and feels like they have the trust of the employer to go out there and do their job. Amazing, you said. Thank you. Zach, thank you so much for your time. Yes. Really appreciate you coming. Thank um, you. Safe trips back to Manchester. Yeah. Um, all the best with Grad Touch. If people want to get in touch with you guys, how can they do that very quickly? Um, they can head to gradtouch.com. If anyone wants to speak to me personally, they can send an email to zach at gradtouch.com. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you again. Yeah, thanks again. Take care, buddy. Cheers. Really thank enjoyed you. it. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much for tuning into this episode. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Zach Williams. Feel free to like and comment below. And if you'd like to hear similar conversations, you can subscribe right down here. Thank you once again. It's been great having your company. I will catch you again very soon. Take care.